Hello YouTube. Um, you know, tonight I was just thinking to myself, kind of had a random thought. And throughout my life, I have always liked to travel. And, you know, I've, I've been around. I have never left uh, the country, like, but I've been to lots of different states, like Florida, I've been to California. I've been to New York, I've been to Boston, Massachusetts, you know, and I've, I've been in a lot of states in between, you know, driving to those places. And I've been, you know, I've got family in, in Iowa and South Dakota and stuff, so, you know, I've traveled around different parts of the United States before, and I've always liked traveling a lot. And I was thinking, just to myself now. You know, I'm what I plan to do after I'm done with like college and stuff is travel. Travel a lot to as many countries as I can. I mean, that's what I really really passionately want to do. And you know, language learning in a way is like traveling learning about other cultures so that's the way I travel in my own little world my own little rea reality you know I, I sit here and I can grab a book for instance like this one you know Indonesian and you know I can learn a language and through that language you learn how this culture views certain things how you know, um, these people think, and, and it brings you, adds new concepts to your brain that you might not have known before. Like, um, there's Native American languages in South America, like in the Amazon and stuff, where the same word for blood also means sap from a tree, tree sap. They, they, they have one word and it, it's meant for both interchangeably. And you know, that tells you about their culture, you know, they, they value the, the rainforest around them. You know, if a, tr a tree bleeding is like a, a person bleeding to them. And, you know, learning different languages is learning, you know, I think there's a quote that goes, to learn another language is like uh, learning another vision of life. You know, I'm I'm learning uh, some Swahili right now, and like if you look at an arm, and in a lot of a lot of European languages, you go, you have a hand, and you have an arm, and we have two words for these two supposedly separate entities, that parts of our body. In Swahili, they say mkono. Nkono, which is your arm and your hand. It's it's they consider it one entity. They're not separated. So if you if you look in any Swahili English dictionary and you look up hand, it'll be mkono. You look up arm, it'll be mkono. It's the same thing to them. So you know you can really uh, find out a lot about a culture by doing that. And it's also too like I like reading, where are they, let's see, these uh, culture smart books on, you know, different cultures, and, you know, I like reading about history and culture of different countries, you know, different civilizations and stuff, like, Here's a book called Five Germanies I Have Known, which is about, you know, German history and whatnot. So, you know, for me, learning different languages and reading these books about different cultures is, is a way of traveling and a way of understanding people. You can never really truly understand another culture unless you know the language. 
and really the same goes with different religions too. See, I, I like learning about religions. I, I always have different kind of religions. And really to understand a religion fully, you need to know the language, the original language that the scriptures are in. Like in, in Hinduism, I believe a lot of the scripture is in Sanskrit. I mean, any translation of anything is always a subjective thing. It's, it's always someone's personal view of how they interpreted this passage and how they are going to translate it. To really ever understand anything, you have to read it in its original form. And I'm sure a lot of you know that since you're learning languages, that things can't always be translated very smoothly from language to language. So, like, I mean, if you wanted to look at the Bible, you would want to know Latin, ancient Greek, you know, old, like, ancient Hebrew, and that type of stuff. So, you know, language, it, it can bring you a lot, of, a lot of knowledge about different cultures and different religions. And, you know, it, it really is a way of traveling without leaving your desk, so to say, without leaving your room, you know. And I think that's probably my f one of my favorite parts about learning languages. Is, is you really get to learn about other people in the world and I find that really really fascinating and you know language you know can bring about understanding between people you know cause you can understand a lot about how people think I mean language really is a psychological thing you know because we develop our language to suit our culture and but at the same time our culture is a representation of our language you know because the the language you speak the way you think affects your actions and the things around you affect the way you think if that makes sense and I always found that pretty interesting about language you know, there's two two uh, subdivisions of linguistics that I've always thought were kind of interesting. And uh, the first one is ethno-linguistics, and ethno being like ethnicity. Um, so ethno-linguistics. And that, they kind of study like how uh, language affects, you know, like your culture or your particular community or how, you know, that the culture and language mix together. And then... Uh, Psycholinguistics has to do with, uh, you know, psychology and and linguistics, kind of mixing them together. How does language affect the way you think? How does the way you think affect your language? And that type of thing. Like, psycholinguists, they can go and they can uh, analyze a book that somebody wrote. And they can tell uh, some personality traits about the author. Or, you know, something like that. Um... They can find out a lot of stuff. Like, uh, psycholinguists have come to the conclusion that Barack Obama, you know, the president of the United States here, uh, is very, very, uh, feminine. They can tell because he uses so much, uh, passive vocabulary and stuff that he's really a kind of a girly guy, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, you know, language is, is really fascinating in that aspect. You can, you can really travel the world in that, in that sense. And I think, you know, it's nice to know the language and go to, you know, the country where the language is spoken and kind of, like, already know to what to expect and then you see like uh, the culture and how how it it goes so well with the language and how everything fits together like perfectly like it's it was meant to be part of a puzzle and I think I think we can even expand that and and just look at the world as a whole and take out each each particular language and culture and see that you know 
it's like one big puzzle, and we're all just pieces to the puzzle. And once you can find each piece and put it in its in its place in the world, you know, then you can maybe understand the puzzle just a little bit more. You can see the whole big picture, so to say. So I think, you know, that's the amazing part for me, you know, when it comes to learning languages.